shit working non-stop The fastest growing podcast We gon' make it to the top Say word hey, We in the game, you know we different Just tune in, my family Joe, he got the vision Yo, another episode of the world's fastest, largest growing podcast. I just touched down in Miami. I got one of the dopest, dopest pop stars in the building. My guy Ziggy to the right of me. Pleasure, man. My guy, what's up, my man? What's up, brother? Appreciate you letting us come here, do this dope interview with you, my brother. How you Absolutely. feeling? I feel amazing. God is good, bro. God is good? And he's working right now, so. I, I, I could dig that. Um, First of all, where you get your hair done at? Man, everybody keep asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, honestly, a girls, they usually bleach it for me. Okay. Um, or uh, I'll do it myself, or I'll go get it done somewhere. But okay. But I like the intimacy of someone that cares about you, touching your hair. Uh, I think it's like, a, it's like a magical thing. I like that, too. I don't have no hair, but I do like... <laughs> I do like when the girls like rubbing her hands through like my yeah. head. It's kind of like and a I great feel like feeling. It comes out better. Yeah. Like like so. Funny story about the hair actually. So when I first so old fans will, will remember this. If if you're a real fan, you really know. When I first started, I dyed my hair half blonde. Okay. And our whole thing is like the moon. You know what I mean? So um, the half moon is kind of what started it all, and it represented the light side of the moon. Okay. You know what I'm saying because. Uh, there's been a lot of darkness in my life, but for some reason, God's always blessed me to be the light. Okay. And I'll always be able to focus on the light. And I want to be that for other people with my music, with my personality, just who I am. And um, the light side of the moon, right? Because I, I released a song called Alter Ego. And that whole song was, it was my first song ever, too. And that's when I dyed my hair. And uh, the whole song is about tapping into the higher version of yourself. And I called it my alter ego. Okay. And uh, that was the light side of the moon, if you will. And then uh, as of recently... I went, and it's a spiritual thing, I'm telling you, like, anything with your hair is really spiritual. So what I did was um, I went and bleached the full hair when I decided to come back out again okay. with this new act with the whole band and everything. And uh, all my friends and supporters, everyone's just calling it uh, Ziggy's going full moon now. So. Oh, okay. That's dope. <laughs> I could dig that. I'm going to take it from the, I'm gonna take it from the beginning. Um, Phoenix, Arizona, born. Um, born your, raised, bio, your bio, your bio... Not to cut your bio is when I was reading your bio like yesterday, I was like, man, this man is a inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Word um, up. I'm a I'm gonna go into a couple things. How was it? How was the the upbringing? I know the situation with your moms. I know the situation with your with your stepfather, and you're here right now. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Hey Amen, bro. Yeah. So I mean, I guess to like uh, break it down and and uh, in the simplest way. Um, my mom was on like a lot of uh, a lot of drugs. Uh, at the time when she got pregnant with me, she was, she was addicted to heroin. You're called the miracle child. Yeah, yeah, the, I'm her miracle child. Like you child. here, like yeah, straight up. I was fighting in the yeah. womb, bro. So I know I'm supposed to be here, man. Like, like, and that's why I fight so hard for what I do. I don't care if nobody's gonna put me on. I'm gonna fight for this shit because I got something to say. Talk about it. And I got something to honestly prove. Like, like I can't let that go for not. You know what I'm saying? I can't let that go in vain. So my mother. She was. Uh, she actually had her second miscarriage a week before getting pregnant with me. Wow! Because she couldn't stop shooting up heroin, and this is real shit. Like you can go ask my mama. You can like like this is really crazy, and um, uh, because she was just done with life. Strongest woman I know. Let me just make sure I say that. Strongest woman I know. Respect. You know what I'm saying respect for my mother. She she's the one. She she's my rock. Um, but she was addicted to heroin, and she was a prostitute at the time, so she don't know who my dad is, but. She was shooting up heroin at that time, and the second baby was out of here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But the third one, that was me. That was you. And I'm a miracle baby. I'm fighting in there. I'm yeah. like, nope, we're not going out like that, mom. We're going to go out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in there fighting, and uh, I like to think uh, it's because I have a strong purpose. And uh, it wasn't me, man. It was God, bro. And uh, helped save my mother's life. And uh, from then on, she always just said like you know when she's pregnant with me and stuff that you know people would just say she had to lighten her and all this stuff so i really i mean talk about the pressure right like i really got to do something here and i really have a message i really have something to say and um yeah bro i feel like uh no matter where you come from it doesn't matter it doesn't matter fact. where you come from it only matters where you're going that's a fact you know and, I mean? and and not to cut you off i want to talk about this because people see you now right 
They see, they see Ziggy. You no, know I'm trying to say they see you now, but they don't know where you come from. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And like, and, and like when people don't know where you come from, it's like they have a perception like he's this, he's that. But if they knew where you come from, it's so many other people that's going through the same thing. It's a fact, bro. And that's why I, that's why it's You dig what I'm saying? The light side of the moon. That's what I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be that light in the darkness. You know what I'm saying? The light side. Everyone talks about the, about the dark side of the moon all the time, but there's a fucking light side too. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a wide open lane for me to be that and inspire other, others to be that. Only, only way I even got to where I'm at is spreading love, positivity, and building others up. Like, even, you know what I'm saying, my squad, my band, it, like, I'm trying to put everybody on. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the energy that we have. We want to put each other on. We want to ride for each other. Have family, because they say it's lonely at the top. So if it's lonely at the top, you might as well bring some motherfuckers with you. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? And uh, people don't know where I come from. Like, I didn't slept in cars, slept in, like, like, so many motels with my whole family. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times, uh, shout out to my brother Artlanta, shout out to my brother Great, uh, doing their own things right now, too. But me and those two motherfuckers, we was, we was homeless together. We moved to L.A. We threw our first show, and I wasn't even making music at the time. They was making music. Wave Pop. Shout out to Wave Pop. And uh, we threw a show, because I put the show together, shut the city down, and they was like, we got to go to L.A. Had no way of doing anything, but we had a dream. It was like, we're going to go, we're just going to make it, bro. And it was the camaraderie between each other and the belief each of us had independently in, in each other that really drove us. So we went to L.A., smacked with uh, reality, if you will. We thought it was going to blow up right away. <laughs> smacked with reality. We had to sleep in cars, on people's couches, on people's floors. And we had a whole team with us, too, riding with us. And it was the love that made everybody attracted to us. And um, I say that to say, without that camaraderie and that, and that genuine love we have for other human beings, bro, being that light, bro, it wouldn't have been nothing. And even before all that, most people know that story. But before all that, me and my biological family, where it all started, like we was, we was going through it, man. Heroin wasn't, wasn't the first or the last drug my mama was addicted to. So, so we had to go through it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I had to raise my little siblings, take care of them. Wow. Um, I did the best that I could. Um, and, uh, you know, sleeping in motels a lot of times. I had holes in my shoes going to high school. I had a girl hit me up, one of the best things. This girl hit me up on uh, Facebook, I think it was, like probably like a few months ago, and she was like, baby boy, I'm so proud of you. I remember you had those holes in your shoes, going to class in them cleats, because after a while, the holes in the shoes was going crazy. I was in high school, so I had the football cleats, the only shoes I had. Wow. I'm going to school in them motherfuckers and still walking with my head held high because I knew I was going to do something, and it didn't matter. This is going to be an amazing story. So if you're going through some shit right now, bro, walk high because it's going to be a fucking amazing story. When people look back, and I knew it, I knew it. So I'm walking in class and uh, um, I got the football cleats on and I'm just click, click, click walking around because I'm proud regardless because I know I'm finna, I'm finna do something. But she was like, I see you, baby boy. You, you really did that shit. And it really like, because I'm not where I want to be by any means, but it definitely let me know like. It's inspirational. It's, it's very inspirational, bro, to know other people saw that shit too, you know, so. Nah, that's, 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 that's dope. Let's, I'm going to keep it in school for a minute. Tell me about the first time you got them Jordans. Oh yeah, <laughs> actually it's a good segue. So, uh, my football, my uh, well, he was a basketball coach at the time, Coach Fair. Shout out to Coach Fair. If you're watching, if you see me at all, man, shout out to you. Very, you you changed my life with this moment. He took me to the to the to the high school locker room for basketball, and because uh, he saw me walking in the cleats, and he was like, "Yo, what are you doing, man? Why you got your cleats on?" I'm like, "These are the only these are the only shoes I got, Coach." He was like. All right, come on, man. Took me in there. I gave my first pair of Jordans, man. They was used up, but I took them it's up. All I good. cleaned them shits yeah, up, yeah, boy. Yeah. I, was, I was stunting after that. It's so, all good. Yeah, first pair of Jordans, man. So um, that was fucking incredible, bro. Yeah. I, I'm, we're, we're talking about this, but do you sit back now? We in this nice, luxurious penthouse. Look like we on different strokes. <laughs> no, seriously. Now, do you sit back now and just... Like, how's your feeling now? Like, when you in the crib sometime, you see how far you come. Like, the feeling that you have, like, what's, what's that like? Are you, are, you, are you more humbled? Are you more appreciative? Are you more like, yo, I told you I was coming? Like, nah, nah, like, nah. like what's, what's, what's your demeanor? Honestly, I have so much gratitude, bro, for being here. But I am so not comfortable at all, bro. I got to move on to the next thing. And um, that, like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. So this is, this is like nothing, this is, this is nothing, but I'm still so grateful because I think about 
all the nights I just wanted a place to sleep, bro. Like, to lay my head and, like, even just call it my own, bro. Like, that just, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and to know that I did it on my own and I'm doing it on my own. Like, can't nobody tell me they're giving me handouts. Can't nobody tell me. That's real. That, uh, you know, I owe them this, that, and the third. No, I earn this shit myself. Bro. Yeah. I stand on business. I stand on my own shit. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Um, and it's not easy, but uh, it's totally worth it. Um, but I, I guess I would say I'm not comfortable by any means. And, uh, but I am extremely grateful. Like, it's a blessing, man. You know what it is, bro? If you do have the opportunity to go through some shit, like if you're going through some shit right now or you've been through some shit, it's the opportunity, bro, because the happiness and the joy that you're going to feel versus somebody else that ain't really went through the shit and they made, you know, parents put them through college and, you know, even if you are going through college, like, you got to go through that shit and you earn some shit, bro, that joy that you're going to have is fucking exponential. I always say this shit. Like, right now, I'm going through shit. It may not look like it, but I'm going through shit and I'm carving my way out right now. And it's because I asked God, I asked him for something. I said, I want this. And he, when you, when you pray for strength, God gives you opportunities to become strong. When you pray to be the next global fucking pop star, talk about it. God's going to put you through some shit to make sure that you can even, when you get there, that you're going to appreciate it, number one. You're going to have all the chinks in the armor and shit that you need to make sure that this armor is durable enough so that you can go through what you, you know what I'm saying? Go be that king, go be that warrior. And on top of that, it's like a, it's like a, it's a gift because it's, it's like a roller coaster, but it's forever going up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like I always say this, the higher the peak, the higher the steep. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So the steeper that mountain is, you're going to, because you got to have enough momentum. You know what I'm saying? So if you, so if you, because if your peak is way up here and your little low is only going to go right here, you're going to be, whoop, you're going to be like, like this. Facts. For a facts. while. But if your peak, if, if it's like, you're going to, boom, you're going you're gonna to make it. You know what I'm saying? And you have to have that. It's a, it's a prerequisite in order to get that thing that you want. And most people don't realize that. So it's a gift because once you get there, you're going to sit there and have the fucking joy. Like right now, me and my bros, we be up. Talk and, about and it. And people be like, oh, it's because y'all got a little bit of money or, or it's because y'all. But they don't know, but they don't know what you've been through though. That's exactly why we got that peak. Because we've been through some shit and we kept it real. We held it down for each other and we still the same. You know what I'm saying? With each other. That shit, money can't buy that. There's so many dudes out here with a lot of money, but their girl is cheating on a nigga with Damn. when niggas like, not me, because I don't do that type of shit, but Talk about they looking it. at me like, <laughs> like they want a piece. And I'm thinking, why? It's because something in their soul is lacking. And I got that thing in my soul because of what I went through. So if you're going through some shit, you're about to go through some shit, man, go ahead and do that shit, bro, because you're going to have that shit too. I'm glad, I'm glad we're talking about stuff like this because the world don't... Everybody's going through something. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I, I say that all the time. We all going through stuff, and everybody need encouragement. You know what I'm saying? And you got, honestly, you're a role model. People look up to you. Thanks. I'm grateful for that. So, 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 so when you're able to tell your story... It's going to encourage, like, the next person that's going through something like that. Ziggy went through that? I didn't even know that. I didn't know he went through something like that. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, and that's the thing, bro. That's like, I don't know who need to hear this right now, bro. Whatever you're going through right now, just know, bro. It's literally, it's because you asked for that next level. And you're going through it right now because it's yours. But God got to put you through a little something real quick. It don't go like that. There's no cost. I mean, uh, excuse me, there's no there's no, there's nothing for free in life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got to pay some sort of cost in order to get what you want. And the more valuable it is, the more you're going to have to pay. But it's fucking worth it. So if you're going through it, just see it as a sign that you're going through it right now because you asked for it and it's yours. You're going to make it. That's a fact. Your early years, when did you, when did you start getting into music? You going through all this stuff. When did you really get into music and like, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'm getting good at it. How did that even happen? Man, you know what? So, like, uh, when I was a little kid, it was always a shower. I just loved to sing, bro. I just loved to sing. Like, I just loved it. Like, it didn't matter what it was, where I was. I just loved to sing. But I didn't, I didn't have the, the guts to think that that, that that could be me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just was like, ah. Uh, so, I, like, I started a film, doing film production and shit, because I thought that was more attainable, not realizing it's just, like, you know, it's all, it's all risky. It's all, it's all tough. You know, I didn't feel playing it safe. So you might as well go for what your soul is telling you because that, so there's, there's a quote and I'm gonna get to it in a second. But when I was a kid, I was always just 
watching like uh, like those music videos that would come on early in the morning, like like six, five a.m. and shit, when you gotta go to school and shit. The music videos, because we didn't have, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't even think it was YouTube back then. Nah. You couldn't really watch. You know what I'm saying? You had to just watch whatever would come on, and I, and and that shit would like give me nostalgia, and I never even really heard the songs before, and it would just give me that that driving force that I felt like really propelled me out of there. You know what I'm saying? It was my light in the darkness. I was going through some shit. But seeing that shit, music and people performing and watching music videos, that shit really gave me some juice that I needed to get through life. And so uh, it wasn't until about five years ago maybe that I was like, I'm going to start making music myself. I'm going to do it. Because I got around some people that did it. Okay. You know? But the quote is... Uh, um, The desire is the proof and the evidence that the fulfillment of that desire is in the constitution of the creature that fills it. And that, in other words, you wouldn't have had the desire, that desire inside of you, if it wasn't in your genetic makeup to go make that shit happen. God don't put it inside of you if it's not, if it's not yours to be had. You know what I'm saying? So that shit is real. That's from Think and Grow Rich. Um, the greatest people in the world will tell you that. So I say that to say, if you're going to dedicate your life to something, it might as well be with the gifts that God gave you and that little, that little, that little, uh, for that vision that you have that makes you peak. Go chase the thing that makes you peak. You might as well, bro, and you'll be very surprised as to what happens. That's what I'm doing. Let me ask you this. Earlier years, who's like some of the, some of the artists that inspired you? It could be hip hop, it could be pop, it could be jazz, it could be country. Like, who's some of the people that inspired you? Man, Shakira. Okay. Um, James Brown. Elvis, as of lately. Ooh, um, Elvis? Frank Sinatra. Hell yeah, bro. I, 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 like, really, for Elvis, it's, it's about the, the energy he was able to portray. Okay. Through his music. Same with Michael Jackson. Okay. It's the energy. It's like, I feel like they're not the best, like, vocalists in the world. It's probably, like, Beyonce is probably the best vocalist. Like, one of the best, right? Angelic ass voice can hit all the notes. Some of these people aren't like that, but it's the energy that they're able to put out through their music that makes you like, wow, that shit is so inspiring to me. Frank Sinatra, one of those people too that just makes Frank me. Frank Sinatra. Man, what? Ooh. Amazing. You got like, you, you, you name it like Hall of Famer, like legendary, like, I didn't think you was going to name these people. Bro, that's the aim, bro. I'm not sitting here trying to just like, be. Like, yo, you named James Brown, Frank Sinatra, Elvis. Bro, I interview a lot of, I interview a lot of artists. And, 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 like, your aim is, like, man, that's, like, legendary. That's, like, a dream team. Bro, and that's, it's a dream, right? So, I'm, you know, I'm going to go as big as I can. And that's what I, that's what I, that's Frank's what's in my natural. heart, bro. That's what I really want to do. You know, I want to do this shit all the way. I want to go, I want to be one of the legends. That's day. a fact. Somebody that did something different enough that mattered and had a message. I want to, I want to go down as that. Did you watch the Super Bowl Sunday? I did. What you think about Usher when he did the Alicia Keys? We off topic, but I gotta ask somebody. This is my first interview since then, so. What you, know you think? What? You think Usher was out of line? I want to be honest. Be honest. I want to, like, like, like. Listen. Do you think he was out of line? I think he's always out of line. <laughs> Real shit. Like, I think he's always out of line. Like, Usher's always, foul, though, right? That's his thing, though. So I mean, nah, do you, sir. bro? Like, do you? I'm not knocking him by any means. I mean, he's a fucking legend. But is that if that's your girl? What you saying to him after the show? I mean, bro, it ain't finna be my girl. My, my girl finna be like, skirt. She gonna skirt him. You know what I'm saying? They was in the moment, though. That's, it's it's kind of how, like, come on. I that's, mean, so it's that's tough Swiss Beats, girl. Swiss, Swiss Beats is a legend. I know. So that's Let's the thing. Let's be clear. She, Alicia Keys is a performer, though. You know what I'm saying? So it's like she's doing the show. That's different, though. I don't think that's performing. I, no, you, I, it was no, a little no, extra. No, no, no. I'm not gonna lie. I look at it. I look at it. I've been discussing this. This is, the first, this is my first interview since the Super Bowl. I think I talked about this, but... I look at acting like it's performing. I looked at... I, oh, it is. I, so, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an artist, so I don't... You gotta tap into it. It's gotta be genuine. But that's what I'm some saying. I don't, form or format. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I look at it like performing. I'm starting to see that it's performing, though, because, you know, it's... it's I don't know. It was just so personal to me. It was... They were so close. It was. And, like, the smile... Like, I got lie. excited. Pause. I got excited. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like, like I'm like, like... Oh, shit! Oh, he's like, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. And Alicia, that, look, and Ali hey, and Ali oh, oh. no, no. But you know what's crazy though? I think it's just more like if I'm a man, the whole world seen it, and I gotta go home with you. You gotta go home. Yeah, that's fucked. I'd have been in the car with her. Like I'd have been in the car. Listen, it's quiet as fuck. You know? I'd have been in the car like, 
Like, are you speechless in the car with your girl? Or are you like, baby? I'm going to say something. I'm going to have to say something. They definitely talked about it. He played you think it real right? P. You, you think it was the right thing? But you, I feel like Alicia Keys, probably like, she's such a star. You think it was rehearsed, though? You, do you think that part was rehearsed? Or it just happened in the moment? You, you, you're an artist. I'm not an artist. Like, so I don't know stuff like that just happened. You put it like that, yeah, there was some rehearsals that happened. No, 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 no. I know it was rehearsals that happened because it's the Super Bowl. I'm saying that. But it could have been. But that part, that part was too, like, was I mean, too, look, bro, it intimate. went viral. Everybody's talking about but it. But that's what I'm saying. Do you think that part was, like, you know what? Let me say this. I'm going to say we're a podcast. Do you feel like they had a conversation about that part? Like, did, in the sense, like, did she get his permission? Like, you know what? Like, Alicia, I'm going to have to do this. I just need you to go with it. You think it was a conversation like that? Damn, you know what? I'll I say this. I wouldn't be shocked if there was a conversation that happened. Because she was smiling too too hard. But I wouldn't... I would totally not be shocked either if that was just totally... You know what I'm saying? Because it was a little disrespectful. I think it was disrespectful on Usher's part. And Alicia Keys, like, I've seen Nicki Minaj be on stage performing with people. And she'd be like, skirt... Yeah. Skirt, nigga, nope, nope. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Also, you're a foul nigga, Usher. I love you, but you're a legend, but you're foul, yeah, man. Here's the thing, bro. He is a little foul. Don't do I, that with my girl. I ain't bro, afraid of it's like, you. it's like, just don't, like, why you doing all that? Like, you can perform and you can make it amazing, but you you got to, I personally think it's diluting his brand a little bit. I think he'd be so much more P if he was just, like, a little bit more just professional. being on his own and not, like, being you, all, you like, You think it's thirst, thirst mode? Because he has a history and listen, listen. And I'm I've the, seen multiple shows where he does that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even. Girls. Listen, and for the record, I'm not even a hate on Usher. I love Usher. I, think I love he, Usher. I, I, think he's one, I think he's one of the best to do it. But I do think I do think he has a reputation of like doing stuff like that. And I think it does hurt his brand. I think it hurts his brand too. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. You know, it, it, so, it, it does hurt your brand. Because see, as so, soon as he did that, everybody was like, Dad, they go Usher again. Right. Yeah. Maybe he, that's his thing. He but struck at the same again. Time, be you, be a hundred. Like he's he's an example of it does work to be authentically yourself. But I think you should also be constantly trying to better yourself. So you know, because that shit will come up, come around and catch you eventually. Now nah, he do that to the wrong person, like, and it's gonna be everybody ain't cool with that. It's gonna be grits. I, I, would, I wouldn't have been like Suge Knight. Oh God, <laughs> and he ain't doing that to Suge Knight. Yeah, right, he wouldn't have been doing that to Suge Knight. I, Hell no. Nah. It's, it's the difference. But let me ask you this: Speaking of the Super Bowl, and you're a performer, you're an artist. Um, well, how do, how do you rate the performance? You feel like it was one of them top five performances in the Super Bowl? Hell no. Not top five, but it was amazing. I think, I think he started amazing. off slow, though. It started off slow. Like I was still glued. I was still like, wow, because I'm just... It's the Super Bowl. We all like... Super Bowl, yeah. And I think... But it's not like I can say exactly what would have made it better. You know what I think it is? Now, I'm going to say this. Let's right? talk about say it. Say word, right? I think it's all about your star power and how you develop star power. How good is your soul you know what i'm saying how much more and you got to go through shit to get a good soul too though is you got to go through shit and you got to make it out of that shit by doing some of the right things that shit makes your soul fucking boom gleaming shining teeth bright as hell and ain't no white strips involved so i think uh i think someone like michael jackson i think blinding lights uh when uh when what's the name did it um the weekend excuse me i think his shit was better loki the weekend shit was better. Okay. Donna shit was better. Their star power was just through the roof, bro. It's like you just like, you know. And I think uh, you can't fake shit, especially nowadays. People starting to wake up too. Like, like uh, the more you fake shit, the more people really see through it. Uh, you can't fake genuine. It, it, just be that shit. So when you're doing something on a stage with a bunch of people watching. And you can tell, you can tell where the energy is coming from. Mm -hmm. And if it, feel, it, it feels like the energy is like, I want you to perceive me as something. I want you to perceive me as super sexy. I want you to perceive me as that nigga or that person or whatever the fuck. Um, I think you can like, most people maybe still won't be able to tell, but I think it will dilute your okay. soul energy that you're giving off. But if you're just like, bro, I'm just so locked into this. I'm so just me and I'm so just, I'm just going to, uh, it's like. They get into that mode, like Beyonce gets into that mode where it's just like, boom, no, I just am this. And I'm just, and, and whatever happens, what's going to happen? And they rehearse it, rehearse, rehearse. Rihanna, boom, they just, boom. That's something that I'm channeling too. What would you do, if you, what would you do different if they called you to do the Super Bowl? What you doing out there? That's something I need to think about. 
Um, you bringing you bringing the whole band with you? Hell yeah, I'm bringing the whole band. Okay. Which I want to, uh, Jared. Why don't you come over here real quick, bro? I want you like shout out to Jared. Jared shout out to on Jared Dylan, in. bro. One of those talents he's written for, written for people like John Lennon. He has some records, bro. Some crazy shit. And uh, without him, I there would be no show. So he manages the band. He's putting this shit together for us. Uh, the new act now, especially it's different for Urban now too. Is um we are coming on some old shit. Like we want to bring that James Brown essence back. We want to bring that Elvis essence back. And uh we're doing it for real with live instruments, violins and shit. You wanna talk a little bit about you got you got violins? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, two of them. Jared, what's up, Jared? How's it going, y'all? Jared I don't want them I don't want them to clip you out and say that I that I wrote for John Lennon. I won the John Lennon scholarship for songwriting. Okay. But John Lennon was dead. When that no, happened. but listen, listen, <laughs> oh, yeah, listen, <laughs> listen. We know he was. We know he was passed away. But any affiliation with John Lennon, come on, man. Any affiliation with John Lennon is is like oh, like yeah. legendary. Let's talk about it. You know what That's I'm trying to good. say? Yeah. So so what instruments do you play, Jared? I uh, play ton of. I'm actually a vocal primary. Okay. But I play guitar, piano, bass, ukulele, a little bit of spoons. Okay. <laughs> jaw harp. Okay. So, 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 with the band, we're forming a band. What do you guys looking? What do you guys look for when you're forming the band? Like, since since you're the man in charge and you're the one that's like behind everything, sure. when when you when you you waking up, you know what I'm saying? You call Zig. You like, listen, I'm trying to put a squad together. What are you looking for? Well, in this case, so I've been doing music direction and live performance for a while now. Uh, in this case, Zig actually, we've known each other for years, and he reached out to me, and he had this vision for this massive project. Okay. Which, like, we both, like, align with that. The energy of the moon is spiritually impactful to both of us, and so we kind of connect. Where did that happen to? Right? It's, it's actually pretty consistent. We get, like, one of our sponsors is, like, Richie Luna, and yeah. it's just, like, the it's moon so theme weird. keeps coming back. But uh, we just, we don't question it. We just go with, go, the, with go with the flow. But in this case, Ziggy hit me up. He had this massive vision, and I was like, yeah, I could... I can make that. I can make that happen. <laughs> hey, dog. Yeah. yeah. So a, a regular, regular studio session. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 go into a regular studio session with you guys. Right. What's going on? Well, well, we're starting off. Uh, so I don't really write. People are gonna hate that, but I don't. Oh, you don't write shit. at all? No. What I do is um, I speak from the heart, and I go in there and I freestyle whatever, even if it sounds like gibberish. I get it out. That's how my best melodies come out. That's how my heart comes out. And okay. then we'll go back and then we'll like write to it and like I'll hear things from the track. It's a magical experience. It's not like, you know, it's more magical. Like I go in there, I get it out, and then I hear something speaking back to me. And I'm like, oh, that's this word and this word and this word. And then a song gets made. And it's always something like with meaning. Um, so after that happens, um, they'll come and they'll, and they'll start putting like real music shit to it, you know? Mm. Uh, and then what we're working on now, though, is um, we want to build it all from scratch. We want to do it just like they did before, where it's like we've got... I mean, because this guy is an excellent songwriter okay. and producer when it comes to pop music. Are you like the LeBron James of the situation? I'm like LeBron James ghost writer. <laughs> 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 if I was just shooting all the shots and okay. you just cut to the basket, yeah. you see him going in. That's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, it's honestly, there's no such thing as like a normal studio session when we get together, but we are trying to bring back the live element of music. So. I like that. I love instruments. I play a couple of instruments myself. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm a big, like, I'm into like the roots, into the Beatles. So I, I love. Beatles. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love like real. The real it's, shit. On the real, though, when I'm driving, the reason I listen to YouTube most of the time, because it's live music. Yeah. I love listening to live instruments. Look at that. See? All the time. Like. Seriously, it's like, so a lot of times I watch like a lot of old, old concerts and stuff and you can hear the live, the bands, I love that. I don't, studio stuff is cool, but I like live instruments, the, the horns, the violins, yes, bro. you know what I'm saying? That's what we want to bring back. Like, I love that to me, and that, that music, got, it, it, just, it, it does something for you, especially when you're driving. When you bro, hear when that you're human there. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. When you hear that human feel, yeah. the performance of that. Strings. Instrument. It just hits you. It hits it, you it does. Place than something and what was I talking about this whole time is uh, about how can you make people really feel something? You know, and I feel like that's what's missing from the music now, especially in the urban world. It's like they're just talking about whatever. People feel something, they be lit. But like to really go into a live show, which, by the way, 
None of our music is on any streaming platform. I think some music is on Apple Music still. We're trying to get it taken down. No more Spotify, no more anything as of right now. Our shows is where we're going to put it all together. Oh, you're now messing with Spotify? Nope, we're not doing it. Not right now. Can you, can, can you, can, you could put live music on Spotify though, right? Yeah, you could, but still. We don't, We make more money doing it ourselves and our shows. And we're more of a... Because we're going to get that movement behind okay, us. Okay. And as we develop that more, then we'll come back and probably drop a few singles. But I think we're going to keep some shit just for the for the fans like just for the shows still you know what i'm saying just some shit where it's like this is for y'all you know what i'm saying because uh i don't know the giants are fucking up they need to adapt and i hope some people follow our, in our footsteps and see how much success we're having we sold out a show without having any music on any streaming platforms not releasing any music no, either no music no and yeah still there's sold the old ass music on apple music that we're still trying to get taken down wow. disclaimer if you guys Dang. go check but so you're trying to tell me y'all sold out a show with no music yes. on no streaming platforms yeah how long ago was that? A week ago? Talk that talk. Yeah. Last Friday. And get About this. This wasn't planned. It was a new moon. <laughs> it was on a new moon. It was on a new moon. Uh, the event was called Moonshine because it was a black tie event. All of our stuff. We wanted to, we want to bring all that essence in there too. Okay. Black tie. Urban black tie, if we, you will. We were at PO and we're trying to come up with a name for the event. We were doing a walkthrough of the venue and you know, he, we've got songs, Ziggy's got tunes, Moon Body, Moonwalk. Okay. And uh and the manager of the bar is like, yeah, it could be like an old speakeasy vibe, moonshine, and we're like, moonshine. We're like, moonshine. That's the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're hoping and, that happens with a band name. <laughs> yes, and then the, yeah, exactly. We don't even have a band name yet. It's just Ziggy Ziggler and the Beatles. <laughs> so, so who's, who's, who's the other participants of the group? You two uh, guys are here. Let's, let's, let's give them a shout out. Yeah, shout out to Misha, who's just such a team player, bro. Such a fucking team player. Amazing violinist. Uh, Damn, we think he's a little. He, we, I love the violin. Violin is Ooh. it brings out my emotion. That's why we were it like, do. we need him. Uh, he's he's an amazing violinist. Um, uh, Costia is an amazing violinist too. Um, extremely talented. Really plays from his soul. He can literally play any song. I don't care what it is. It could be um, Snoop Dogg. He gonna play it on violin. It's weird. It's crazy. He will dazzle you with virtuosity, as he likes to say. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's big ass words. And shit. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, we have Jared Dillon, obviously the leader of the band. Um, okay. He usually is doing vocals, backup vocals, and you know, uh, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, and of course DJ X. D shout to DJ X. He's our DJ. Uh, this dude will live. DJ, like real so life. Have live a DJ, DJ. Why y'all playing live new age, music? New age, we gotta make a little we'll new age. start a song completely live, and he'll just be there tapping that along that and be ready with whatever tempo we're at, with wow. whatever beat he's got. Like yeah. he is. He'll be playing like my backup vocals from the stems of the song. Okay. Live, DJ. Wow. So we make it a real experience. Like and it's all about like layers, right? So it's like, first we start off with just him on a. On a uh, uh, on a riff on the guitar, but then na boom boom boom. Dun, dun, dun. Is this on the bass or or lead guitar? No, he's playing his guitar. I'll pl I ha I'll make the guitar sound like a bass. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Octave drop. Okay, With a loop okay, pedal. Okay. He has a loop pedal, so. Oh, okay, okay. So he runs it like that. A lot of live looping. And then I'll come in with the vocals, and then it's like she playing with her nose every time she step out, and then here comes the violins, woo, and then the next layer is all together. Move walk into the groove and then it's just everybody DJ X drops the beat boom and it, that's layers that's an experience and when you're there at the show it's like everyone's like Whoa, and they're like okay because you hear so beautiful the way he plays guitar by itself and then yeah them, them my instruments voice comes is, in, them instruments them instruments move you though they do those live instruments man you could be going through something you hear like the guitar or something and it's like it moves you for real and that's it bro the live shit really moves yeah. you bro and uh, that's what we want to have bro we want to bring that essence back like let me let me ask y'all this though since y'all here do y'all feel like the place of music where it's at right now do you feel like it will ever come back to where it was at from like the beatles the rolling Stones? yeah because we're gonna take it there talk about it we're like, gonna take it there that's the aim bro that's, that's how you feel about. right now oh yeah, yeah that's what we pray. i'm not gonna say that we're there yet but we're we're gonna get there yet i feel like i'm jared i'm there jared, there? Feel like, <laughs> jared feel like he did jared i've been there jared said he's there <laughs> Yeah, dude. Well, that's exactly where we are. So live, it's it hurts, man. Like yeah, I don't even so know live. what I'm gonna say next. I say that though. I just think <laughs> I just think like like we do have work to do in terms of to be the fucking best that we can be. We have a lot of work to do, 
But we're gonna do it. We're gonna bring that essence back. We pray about it. Yeah, music needs that every day. Like this, this, this is what I'm writing down. It's not like it's not just us either. It's God. Like like we gotta. You know what I'm saying? All all favor to God. Praise the Most High because He's backing this. I'm with y'all. That's the biggest bank ever. And that's that's my <laughs> homie too. You know what I'm saying? So so no, I'm definitely. We want to bring that back too. Yeah. Solus. Yeah. What you think, Jared? Jared? What you think? I'm. I'll just say this. Talk that talk, Jared, because you feel like you want to talk the talk. We played at a club. What was it called? The Joint of the joint? Miami. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, we played at the Joint of Miami, and talk it was a it. long list, a long li uh, roster of artists playing all night, and everybody had their beats. Everybody came through. We got on that stage, and we had people clapping along and singing to nothing but us and a guitar. That's it. Wow. Total acoustic. Literally, Going crazy. The host of the event was like. Uh, listen, people like to hear music. Are you sure you want to go up? Like, had no faith in us whatsoever. Because they so know who we are, but, yeah. they, but they were expecting something like, and, and, and like, this is a new thing. You know what I'm saying? This is a new way that we're coming at it. And uh, she was just like, bless her heart too. She's amazing. But she was just like, hey, like, Yo, you sure you want to do this? Like, like because they're she, expecting she, she to hear optimistic, some shit. Optimistic, like I don't know if this going like. She was just work. looking out, to be honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Watch this. Went up there, boom, boom, boom. First thing up, crazy, <laughs> 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 like, because nobody's doing it. That's the Elvis effect, if you ask me. Jared, I think we got it. He talked about some of his influences and some of the people he looked up to in music. Who's some of the guys that you kind of like looked up to in in this music yeah, culture? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, Paul McCartney, as far as songwriting, okay. that's my number one. Which is funny because I won the John Lennon award, but yep. like Paul McCartney is my my goat. But uh, honestly, same with Elvis and Sinatra and uh, just the '50s, the big band '50s music really gets me inspired. So and, we mesh. Yeah, and so then that's why like we bring the strings into the modern production and everything, and that's we bring that. I, I've been studying music for over a decade. What like, are we calling it? What's G the genre? Funk. Some gangster funk, funk, maybe a little ghetto gangster pop. Funk. Shout out to Warren G. Yeah, shout out to Warren G. <laughs> shout out to Warren G. Exactly. Like, like uh, we're taking all that essence, but we're gonna put our own spin on it. Cause like we got the culture behind us, you know what I'm saying? We well, I'm from the hood, you know what I'm saying? Talk like, that talk. Like, so we're gonna still have that essence in it and that culture in it, but we're gonna it's pop music still, it's it's funk, it's gangster funk, gangster pop, ghetto pop, whatever, but people are calling it that, you know what I'm saying? But uh we're gonna bring that that that, that fifty shit into it. What what y'all think about hip hop right now? The truth. You wanna go first? Y'all real quiet. Like y'all. Yeah, like, you hear? Like y'all got real quiet, both of y'all. <laughs> Beautiful big big titty woman just up out the sky, you know. <laughs> first of all, big fan of Clerks. Love Clerks. Okay. This is the sample. I don't know if you know. Um, I had that song before it came out. Fun fact: I played it for my friends and shit. Somebody airdropped it to me at Soho House. Beautiful big titty woman just don't pop out the sky, you know? I wasn't gonna tell anybody, but he shared it with me. <laughs> he did share it with you, yeah. <laughs> Somebody that that was there. Thank you. Nobody believes me. I can keep me. a secret. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I like it. It's fire. It's catchy, but I just do feel like. Uh oh. It could be. There could just be so much more in the music, man. Like what happened? Everyone's saying it. Everyone's saying it. it's not just us. That's why I wanted to ask you guys because like, it's it's. I'm a big hip hop head. I'm I'm old. I'm 45. So. I've been listening to hip hop my whole life, but it's it's so different now. Yeah, it seems like everybody's like the same. Well, okay, you know can what? I talk shit for a it's second? It's mad talk, love. Talk to, yo, well, Darren, I just want to say mad, to mad respect for you for having respect for us young heads coming into the game with something new that y'all actually favor. Because <laughs> yeah, you know, man. usually it's always like a all them old heads know what they're talking about. Oh, nah, you sound man. like the next Travis Scott, bro. And yeah, I'm like, uh, no, no, <laughs> no thank that's you. not where he's going. But yeah. the old people, but the older, I think the older people, I wouldn't say they be hating on the younger guys. I just think they don't, they don't have an understanding. No. See, I interview people all it the evolves. time. Yeah, I interview people all the time, so I kind of see like everybody's different. I'm not gonna be like, yo, they're corny. Cause, nah, like it's rocking. Yeah. But a lot of the older people are like, well, we wasn't doing this in our day. We listen to Ray Charles, and Ray Charles is better than Usher. I mean, everybody's different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There but would like, be no Usher without Ray Charles. Yeah. There I, wouldn't I, be. I, honestly, I love Ray Charles, though. Oh, yeah. Like, Hit the Road Jack. Oh, hell, that's what I'm talking about. Hit the Road Hit Jack. Hit the Road Jack. That bass line is crazy. That shit right there. That, that whole track is crazy. And when they're, they're playing that live that music, you know how much work that they put into that? They're practicing but you know, he, you know, he was the first one to um, play with, like, a... Um, a symphony before. Oh yeah. Yeah, he I started that. that. That's cool. You you never seen you ever seen the movie Ray? No, but if you watch the movie watch. Ray, if yeah. you watch the movie Ray, he was the first one, and and they had issues with that. 
All y'all seen Ray, right? They had issues with it. Yeah, because they didn't want him to do it. The record label, I think Warner Brothers had an issue with him doing that. They didn't think it was going to work. So he was the first one to play with an actual... That's so funny. He played it with a symphony, and then and he mixed that with what he had going on, and nobody thought it was going to work. That's the big vision. And that's how... That's yeah. that's how he came up with like a lot of his music. He was the first one to do that, like play with that, like it's, a symphony. It's funny how that's crazy. Whenever the industry's like, that's not gonna work. Yeah. It's the biggest, most transformative thing that you. So can he mi- he mixed all that. He was the first one, and then it just went like that's like. That's why we're signed like, to ourselves. Like haywire. There's not gonna be anybody telling us what to do before we get you know enough motion for people to be like, because they're gonna be like, oh, because you get your own motion. I want to talk about that too. As an artist, get your own fucking motion, bro. Everybody's talented. Everybody named Mama talented. This shit is saturated. Get your own motion. Get get some community behind you. How you get the community behind you? Give. You know what I'm saying? Be valuable to them. Not just all about you as an artist. Be about the community, right? And then we get your own motion. Everybody gonna come flocking to you. So we're not signing to nobody. We're signing to ourselves. Talk that talk. We do our own shows. Do our own production. Manage the whole band ourselves. Do our own music. Do our own writing. Everything ourselves. So that way we can we can bring to the world what we want to bring to the world in the way that we want to do it. So the vision really is, we're going to have a, what was the number? A 17-piece orchestra in a stadium and sell out Madison Square Garden. That's where I'm from. Three that's nights dope. in a row. MSG, New York. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm from. That's, if you sell out Madison Square Garden, I'm pulling up. Say less, bro. I'm pulling up. <laughs> you're going to be oh, out there. You're going to be I'm on stage. Yeah, you're going to be on I'm stage. Coming, you're going to yeah. be like, hey. <laughs> the New Yorkers is tough. Hell yeah. The New Yorkers is tough, but that sounds dope. That's Let's go back true. to the hip-hop question. Oh yeah, I was gonna say hip-hop? something. Um, so it's hip hop, but it's also pop. It's everything that we would find on top forty radio, anything Ooh. today. Mm. And this is what. And so I like, I study this stuff. If you look at any song off the top forty, five writers, five producers, ten producers, and that's the thing. And so knowing how the sausage is made, I'm sorry, I don't want to disillusion anybody here, but like. That's why it all sounds the same, because they've got a dozen people in the room writing, the so- writing as many songs as they can in a day, and then they play a dozen beats to whatever artist that, that they think it sounds like, and, and then if the, that artist doesn't like it, they bring it to the next artist. Yeah. And oh, they just, they just so it give it to same. somebody else? Oh, there's just, oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna get whacked by the um, Fuck it, bro. ill music lot, Adi. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, dude, yeah, it's seriously, they've homogenized music. They've turned it into uh, mass-produced, manufactured um, hits, and they know how to reproduce that because if you get a hit, one hit song, oh man, that, it's out of here. And I know, but it, it just seems like people are getting like one hit song and they can't make another hit song after that. And that's, that's probably that's why. That's because they're not a true artist like this motherfucker right like, here. Thank you, bro. Like, it's <laughs> just you. crazy. They make one hit song and it's over. How hard, right. is, how hard is it to make, like, like, go back to back to back to back? I mean... I would say it's definitely fucking noteworthy. But it's a skill. It's, it's an a art. skill that you can work on. I'd say. There are plenty of people who do it. Bruno Mars. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bruno Mars has some incredible collaborators. But if you look at who he works with, it's the same people over I and over. I definitely think Drake I definitely think Drake has gone back to back to back. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, Hell yeah. Yeah. He, nah, Drake. He's definitely going back. They hate back. on him and shit. And people hate on him. Some people actually don't hate on him and actually give him his flowers. But... He, he definitely said when he dies, he's going to be a fucking legend. He's a walking legend right now. No, nah, he's a legend Already right now. Shout yeah. out to Drake. I, I, think, to Drake. I, I think Drake is probably the most consistent Super. hip-hop artist ever. Flowers for him, bro. We're going to work with you eventually, bro. When we do, just know we was always rooting for you, dog. That's what it is. Yeah. What you got coming out new, my guy? Um, we got a show coming up uh, on the 15th. We're headlining a mini festival. It's a, uh, it's called Secret Mantra. It's in a, uh, it's in a big ass manor. Um, so there's two stages. We're headlining the main stage. Uh, he actually has a slot too of his own original music on the, uh, on the second stage. So both of y'all performing separately? Yeah, both are performing together. Together too. Too. He goes together on before me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, together and separate. Okay. Um, amazing artist as well, you know what I'm saying? Like, Completely different completely style different. of music. We can't even be on the same stage. But it meshes. <laughs> it does. Are y'all mesh. like? Do, do y'all kind of like be like in a friendly competition? I don't believe in competition personally. Okay. Um, we can't do it without each other. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I love so, that. 
Exactly. Like I, I said, bro, I, lo- I, love, it's I love that energy. Bro. I love that yeah, energy. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We're I love family, bro. We're, we're, Cause you know, we're rappers family. be like, yo, I gotta make a better verse to him. Man, fuck that. And that's why you you'll only be, you'll only ever be better than the next man, or as as good as, or less than. You'll never be your own. And when you're a creator versus a competitor, you're in your own fucking lane. I'm creating. You know what I'm I saying? I'm not, I'm not here to be in competition with you. That breeds weird ass energy. I love you know this. What I'm but being a creator, that breeds abundance, beautiful energy. You know, most people will be like, this is my show. I don't want to. No, no, no. I've had shows Shorts, where I'm like, hey, guys, 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 this is amazing and all. Thank you so much. But listen to him real quick. And I sit my ass fucking down and let him do his thing because he's fucking talented and the world should hear it. Love that. Okay. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot before we get y'all up out of here. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I have a couple questions. You got to give me your honest answer. First question is Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles? Ray Charles for me. Stevie for me. All right. What? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is the Beatles or Rolling Stone? Wow. On three. One, two, three. Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Next question is Nirvana or Guns N' Roses? Ooh. Nirvana. Nirvana. I used to love Kurt Cobain in them, man. He's the man, bro. He's the man. Like, that yo, voice. smells like Teen Spirit. It smells like Teen Spirit, baby. I, like, I play the drums, so like, like, yo, hearing that beat, that's one of the best beats ever made. Do, 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 ever. Do, 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 do. You looking for a, uh, a side gig or? Man, I, I'm a church boy, you know. I can, hey, I church can play boys. The best I can, musicians. I can, yeah, church, everybody in All church. All come from church. Yes. All the yes. best musicians. It's Elvis true. got something from church. James Brown got something from truth. church. I got something from church. I, I definitely felt... The Holy Ghost in church. I'm sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting there. all of a sudden, Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, like, like going crazy. Like I felt it. I felt it. Maybe that was God giving me a little something, giving me that star power in that moment. Maybe. Next question is Michael Jackson or Prince? Come on now. On three. Okay. One, One two, two, three. Michael MJ. Jackson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Prince played like every instrument though, right? Prince is of course. So, so you know that, right? Cool. Yes, he's the man. Oh, one of the best guitar. I think every instrument. Just one of the greatest guitarists of all guitar, time. Guitar, flute, pussy. Every instrument he plays it. Yeah, fr- and he plays it well. Prince played like every instrument. Though. That's why I look at him as like probably like one of the greatest of all time. Cause he's like to me, he's like one of the greatest musicians. He is though. I ain't gonna like, lie. Michael. But Michael. Michael ain't really like it's play funny. instruments. I guess you're right about that. No, I'm for real. Like, but it depends. It depends what you like looking at. Like, I should just ask y'all like, who's better? Who's a better dancer, Michael Jackson or Chris Brown? Ooh. No, I like the first question, to be honest. Michael Jackson is better because he's the OG. In my well, I, 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 I just think Michael Jackson as an artist, the most complete package, Prince. really branded it. But I, like that's you're you're making a case for Prince and I I was thinking no, cause, better cause, musician, cause, better artist. Yeah, because know. because when I asked that question, like I had like different answers. I love asking these questions. Like and what Prince, man, like Prince played like every instrument. I don't think nobody Plays every instrument. Dude, like, yeah, you know what? Oh. They should have made a super group performance where they had Prince on like some of the instruments, and Michael Jackson was the singer, was like the main, you know, vocalist, and like that would have been insane. But Michael Jackson's probably the greatest entertainer of all time. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Just like the Me too. overall. Like when you think, yeah. But Prince, seriously, is yeah. like one of the greatest musicians that ever live. Like yeah, he, his yeah. whole process and his speed, it just like, and his prolif prolificity. Prolific. Bro, you got me on the words. I don't even know. Uh, that. He big words. I don't know nothing so about much, that. So much. I don't even know clearly. <laughs> but he was a prolific dude. Yeah, yeah, he because. was. You know, I think uh, Michael Jackson, something we should be taking from him is uh, really putting on a show, really being an entertainer, really putting on a whole show. It, it goes down to the lighting, the way that the lights come in, the moves you're busting up there, the way that your vocals are hitting, when the instruments come in, that they come in on key, that they come in on point, and they come in at the right fucking time. All that, all that. That's nah. That's tough. That that's I I've, I've seen I've seen like performances and this this is my last question to even go there about performances. So you got a couple dollars left, and you got to take you got to pick one performer. You taking Usher, Beyonce, or Chris Brown? Definitely Beyonce. A word? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Beyonce, for sure. Jared, what's up? Usher, Beyonce, or Chris Brown? I feel like it has to be Beyonce because she's the least scandalous of the three. (laughs) 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 
heard it here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in the I'm in it for longevity, honestly. I guess I could dig it. I guess she do got the clay record. Like, yeah. 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 I do. I mean, Usher taking everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. You know how many times they probably rehearsed that show? Like You think so? Well they have to. It's the Super Bowl, you well, know. Yeah, but so so Jab, what part? you think? You think they rehearsed that part? I I didn't see it. <laughs> so you so you think that wasn't rehearsed? I don't know what we're talking about. I I saw a screenshot of him all up on her like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh oh you didn't see the Super Bowl at all I didn't see I seen no oh, I was okay. working I I had a gig I was working always working this man I guess if I you was ain't actually see it, I, yeah. I performed at the Super Bowl party that so that did so you yeah I did oh nice it was whatever I couldn't go. but uh, couldn't make it yeah, it's okay my guys we in Miami. My guy Jared over here, Ziggy on check in. My guys, let me know where they can follow, subscribe, everything. Um, at Ziggy dot Ziggler, Z I G G Y dot Z E I G L E R. Uh, shout out to Brass Bacon. That's the label. That's the thing that made us. Um, yeah, shout out Brass Bacon. I'm Jared Dillon. J D Y L A N. Music is you find me everywhere for that. And that's what it is. The Say Word Podcast, Miami. We up out of here. Say Word. The fastest growing podcast up in the world right now, you know Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion, let them know what's happening